All right, Shalom, Shabbat Yirah, first and foremost, giving all praise to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakach Wadash, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. Shalom to the elect of Israel, who are the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans that the Lord will have mercy on in these latter days. Shalom to the men of the Lord, preaching and prophesying on the highways and byways in sincerity and truth. Shalom, Shalom. And uh, this here is going to be a lesson on. Esau Edom and what I'll title this is the identity of Esau Edom has become mainstream and the reason I wanted to do this because as I was typing in basically who is Esau Edom and just type that into Google um, because I was just curious as we know that title who is Esau Edom is actually a book that uh, that is written by who I will just refer to for the remainder of this lesson as the 1948ers who are the uh, inhabitants currently of uh, of the land of Israel over there right now um, who are professing to be someone who they're just not you know and that's that's proven all throughout prophecy and scripture but even by their own mouth as the scriptures say that they would their own lips would condemn them you know um, and, I, and I'll get that uh, a little bit later on, but the main point that I wanted to bring out here is why I say it's going mainstream is because this book was made popularized by the Hebrew, by the uh, Hebrew Israelites. All right, and it say, straight up says here when you just type in the name of that book, who is Esau Edom? Says according to the Hebrew Bible, Esau is the progenitor of the Edomites and the elder brother of Jacob, the patriarch of the Israelites, Esau and Jacob were the sons of Isaac, Rebekah, and the grandsons of Abraham and Sarah. Of the twins, Esau was the first to be born, with Jacob following, holding his heel, which was a symbolic uh, event, all right, that, uh, that basically foretold that, you know, Esau would rule first and then Jacob would follow, all right. The main thing I want to point out here is this is the first thing that pops up, this image. <laughs> all right google now has it right you know and you're gonna i'm gonna show you in a video later about how so-called white people still portray jacob as a as a uh, so-called white person when when that's the furthest from the truth you know esau would not have been described in the way that he was described if it, it was that close of a resemblance you know but the reality is like it you see it here on this image is Jacob was mo was much closer. If I can get this image to blow up, this this took you to <laughs> the GOCC apparently, but that's the first search on Google. That's beautiful, you know. Even though GOCC is off as hell, uh, that Jacob looked more much more like this, and Esau looked a lot more like that. You know, that that's the only reason that it would make sense to describe them, uh, to describe Esau the way that he was described, because he looked uh, extremely different. He was, he was basically considered red and became synonymous with the word red. And later his, his remnant, his seed was called Edom, you know, from Esau. So I wanted to get that. If that's a beautiful thing when you just type in Esau, Isaac's son, boom, there it is. You know, and I and the main reason I wanted to look at that was because I wanted to check on see how much this book was because the last time I checked, the cost of this book for a brand new one was about sixteen hundred dollars, and I know brothers have testimonies of that book costing much higher than sixteen hundred dollars. As you can see now, it's down to you know, <laughs> for a, the whopping low low price i guess a black friday type price of 683 for a book man hey, if you can you can buy a used from 495 hey that's that's crazy for a book that old that uh should easily be able to be reprinted but we all know you know what kingdom that we're in and what to expect you know from this so Ultimately, I found that that to be a beautiful thing because, as the scriptures say, Esau would be discovered and, and exposed, you know. 
this is uh, Lamentations 4 and 21. It says, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. So this is Esau. Edom controls Google, all the things that you can search, which they're, they're you know, they could suppress it one day. I mean, they, they've been doing it before. It's not going to stop them from doing it in the future. But, uh, but you know, ultimately, man, they're naked now. You know, they're, they're, they're exposed. When you, when you look at Google, this is, this is the comparison now Esau. You know? Now, let me see if I just type in Esau, put it, put it uh, it says I didn't do this, but yeah, when you type in Esau, boom. Isaac's son, you know. Hey, that's a beautiful thing, man. And and for all of you guys that say, you know, Esau, Edom, you know, he was done away with. Well, you'd have to explain, you know, quite a few things about, you know, Antipater, the Idumian, who, who was, uh, who was the father of, uh, of Herod. All right. That, that's an Idumian in, in a, in a noble Roman house, you know, showing that Esau Edom was, uh, was of the ruling class of Rome. At that particular time and they continue to be so you know because the rome is an empire you know so it's not made up entirely of edomites but the ruling class was made up of edomites you know and jake ended up taking over that ruling class and became part of the army and things later on but the same thing happened in greece you know like the macedonians were really the edomites you know before they before they conquered and, and unified Greece was a bunch of city-states. You had uh, Thebes and Athens and, and Sparta, you know. Those weren't originally Edomites. The Macedonians were Edomites that came from the north. And, and when Philip came, he basically united them and, and made them into a, uh, you know, a, a powerful army and a country. And then from there, they became an empire. So Esau, Edom gets in and infiltrates the top just like he does today. And you'll see that when... I played this video about how they took over the Royal British House, you know, the same way. So this is Isaiah 137 and 7. It says, remember, O Lord, your house, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed. So King David is prophetically speaking that Esau, Edom, would be considered the daughter of Babylon. Now we know Jeremiah goes heavy into the daughter of Babylon in terms of the end time prophecies, which there's a, there's a million scriptures on those, on destruction of the daughter of Babylon. And then you have Babylon the Great in a lot of times. So you'd have to explain, you know, who, who are the Babylonians today? Who are considered the daughters of Babylon today? You know, where is Babylon the Great? It's right here in this with Western uh, civilization that's ruled by America. All right. So it, it all it all connects and comes back together. But I wanted to play this this video. And uh, this is the guy. No more news. And if you get a chance, this is an hour long video. Uh, but. uh it, it straight up points out that uh, the the nineteen forty eighters are even right now to this day, not just in the book, it's not just in this book, uh, Esau Edom that it came out. The nineteen forty eighters are still saying as of as we speak right now that the Edomites are so called white people. Right now they're still saying that. All right, and it comes out right here in this video, and this whole video is pretty much bringing that out. But see, the 1948ers are are acting like they're not Amalek, you know. <laughs> That's the thing, like they're not part of that uh that house of Esau. But 
we all know that that's not true. So let me let this play. David, I've seen many rabbis in, in many articles saying that Edom is Rome, is the West, is Christian, Christianity is America. And this guy is saying that we are waste product of his. You heard that? So he's heard so-called Jewish people, the 1948ers. This is in their Times of Israel uh, uh, article that came out a while ago. But they're still speaking that rhetoric, calling it out who they are still. Israel. Is that supremacist? Well, he's not saying it. He's saying the Zohar says it. Is the Zohar and, supremacist then? And, well... I mean, it's going to come into kind of like the iconoclasm in burning down statues, if you say, or, or tearing down statues and what people said in ancient times and talk about slavery. Because obviously the Bible and the Talmud, although had a concept of justice for slavery, um, were not anti, anti-slavery. anti In fact, it was generally uh, the Reformed Jews and, and the Jews that went away from uh the religion that ended up uh, fighting against slavery because the religion had generally had a, a sanctioned method of slavery. It's uh, condoned in the Bible, and there's different ways to understand that. Uh, yes, but you're saying eventually the Bible... This Edomite right here, he knows, he, he's worried, <laughs> you know, about being Esau, Edom, because the uh, so-called Jews are accusing him, the, the what they call the regular so-called white people, uh, of being Esau, Edom. You know, and he knows what the scriptures say about them. Bible has to be banned, God forbid, because of political correctness. And, uh, you know, is where the Bible, you know, in essence, from a modern day perspective, is the most you know, politically incorrect of all books. I'm happy that you, you uh, acknowledge there that the, the Torah condones slavery, because I just learned this last week. You know, yeah, it it's the media and, and all the narrative right now is that Europeans should be blamed as the sole people in history for slavery. And, and I watched a special from Professor Tony Martin. Who oh, and Professor Tony Martin is, is done, uh, you know, whether he realized it or not, he, the, the work of the Most High was done through him on all that research that he brought out. If you read the book, uh, The Secret Relationship Between Blacks and uh, Jews. I mean, I mean, he brings it out, man. Professor Tony Martin, you know, look that guy up. Who, who says that it was Jews that were dominating the slave trade with the ships and the auctions and, and their rate of ownership in the United States and just running it all over Europe, you know, for, for um, centuries. And, and then I learned that the, the justification, the religious justification for the enslave, enslavement of Africans was uh, justified through the Talmud and the story of Ham and, and some uh, extra rabbinical interpretations of, of that. Right, because the Talmud is basically how they twisted everything upon his head, man. See, they're 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 trying to take over all of the European nations. You know, Amalek is trying to conquer them, and, and he's he's twisted it. You know, and he's made you know Israelites into Hamites in, in their in their uh, in the Talmud. You know, and they justify it that as a means to enslave us because they needed us enslaved because we were still we still knew that we were Israelites in slavery you know we were passing on stories oral tradition you know we were singing you know the, some of these Negro spirituals which is you know some of the evidence there of us knowing who we are you know you have the Native Americans the so-called Native Americans who it was discovered the book the name of the book is eluding me of the lost tribes and uh, something, the, the Lost Tribe, I forget that that book was heavily expensive as well too. But all, all this evidence that was suggesting who the real Israelites are, and that's why one of the main reasons, I believe through the Spirit, why we were, so, we were targeted so heavily, man. You have to think about it. You know, that's a major expensive endeavor. They brought over 10 million of us across the Atlantic Ocean, man. That's a month-long journey. Back and forth, back and forth for hundreds of years. You know, you know how much money you have to spend to do that and how much effort and resources you have to put into that when you when you already had an indigenous population over here that you could have just enslaved most of them. But see, they chose a particular 
group out of West Africa. All right. That, and that's why they invested so heavily into it. The, uh, the, the West in Dutch India, the Dutch West India Company. All right. The Royal African Company. All these big enterprises, you find out that, you know, the 1948ers owned very large stakes in those companies and their stocks and shares. And, and ultimately, it ended up being, uh, you know, a major, major enterprise. All right. But they but they use that whole Hamitic, uh, that switcheroo, you know, <laughs> in their own town, but to, to flip things on its head to make you think that all dark races come from him and it's just not true the vast majority of races are 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 dark or various shades of brown all right so that that's nonsense let me skip ahead to another point here i believe this is where i want to start uh, you know because i think we're gonna you know maybe mention some stuff now you see how they portray jake you know, he didn't look, the, the, he wasn't the same skin color as this guy. They want, they want you to believe that Esau just had red hair. No, he was red all over. And, th and, that, and that was distinct from Jake, Jacob, our forefather, because he was not red. He was, he was a brown skinned man. Most likely dark. Uh, for, uh, regarding Jeffrey Epstein, should mention that uh, most Kabbalists believe that Edom was migrated from Rome. To and when they say Edom, that's Edom. You know, they say it kind of funny. Let me back that up. Believe that Edom was migrated from Rome to the British royalty. And Bam, you heard it there. They migrated from Rome. So the Romans, that, that everything that descended from the Romans, the Roman Empire... The uh, the so-called Holy Roman Empire, you know, which you had the ten horns come out of that. You had Spain, you had France, you had uh, the Germanies, the German Germanic peoples, you know, the Anglo's, uh, the Dutch, you know, the Italians. All, all of those people came from out of the uh, remnant of Rome. <coughs> to lock you. All right, into the and, and into uh, what migrated from Rome to the British royalty, and, mm. and uh, you know some conspiracy. So if you think of British uh, royalty, you know, maybe uh, Jeffrey Epstein and Prince Andrew, from a typical uh, British uh, uh, conspiracy type theory, or even mainstream belief of uh, of the Kabbalists, to, to say that uh, is it possible that Prince Andrew is actually a direct descendant of Asav, and if the Kabbalists would say. And Aesop is Esau. They they don't say uh they don't pronounce it Esau. They pronounce the the V sound, uh, and they say Aesop. Shalaki. He's actually a direct descendant of Aesop, and if the Kabbalist would say that uh, you know this uh, th that uh, th this is your perspective that uh, you know the controllers of Europe in the West are in fact the descendants of uh, Aesop and. Uh, you know, who that is, if it's Rome, if it's the Pope, or if it's, uh, you know, the Queen of England. The Christian West. Okay, <clears throat> this is, this is a... There it is, you heard it there, you know. Now, they're calling it like a conspiracy theory, but we all know, you know, he mentioned the Pope, that in the Vatican Library, they have a lot of these records. And, and we know that the uh, 1948ers have been very, very wealthy for a very, very long time, at least the elites of them. And, and they know who their bloodlines go back to in a very uh in, in a in a uh going way way back really you know hundreds and hundreds even thousands of years they can they can go back because uh you know ultimately they they stay clipped up and that's through the spirit that that they passed that on and now it's coming out because a 1948er is the one who wrote this book which is how we came uh, a lot of uh People of Israelites came into the knowledge of, you know, proving who they are, you know. Now, they say it's a conspiracy theory, but we know through the spirit, you know, your spirit bears fruits, man. And, and who's doing the most wickedness on the planet Earth? See, I, 
all this is powerful for it to come out. But ultimately, you know, I know who Esau Edom is by all of the wickedness that's being done and who is it being done by. All right. <laughs> you can always tell by their fruits. You know, you're you're the red horse in Revelation. All right. And Zechariah six. <clears throat> all right. You're you're the uh, <laughs> you're the plague on the planet Earth. And, but it's beautiful that it's coming out from them. It says Psalms 64 and 8. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. And that's exactly them. You know, their their own tongue. And this is also them in Job 15 and 6. Thine own mouth condemneth thee, and not I. Yea, thine own lips testify against thee. So this is infighting. You know, this is the house being divided and breaking down, you know. One side call, calling one side out is being Esau. The other one saying, well, y'all are uh, conspiracy theorists trying to take over the world. And, you know, you have what you call so-called Zionists, you know. But uh, Lord will not remember to put the link to this video in the, uh, in the description. But watch this whole video. They basically go in on it, you know. It's a painting here of Jacob and Esau. We're going to talk about this a little bit. Interesting. You and me could almost uh, play off, uh, re recreate this image of Jacob and Esau right now a little bit, couldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean you're not a redhead. You're, you're. If you, uh, I'm blonde Esau's though. Famous. I'm blonde and white, and I turn red in the in the sun. That's close enough. Well, hey, hey, he got it. <laughs> Give his brother a hand. You know, or not a brother, but you know. Hey, he's got it. You know. Now this other uh, so-called uh, well, this 1948 is going to say, well, no, he's synonymous with red. No, so is clearly yes. uh, you know given the symbol of red. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, all right. So they 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 get it, man. How much more proof do you need? You know, at the end of the day, this thing's being brought down, and I'll bring out this last piece, which uh, I just saw the Apostle Tahar go into, which is if you uh, you type in Petra Eagle now Petra. Is is the uh, is is a uh, is a town a a uh, how do you want to say like a uh, it's a uh, <clears throat> a temple or or so if you will you see it built here in Petra in in ancient Edom basically it's a town uh, in, in ancient Edom that where Esau Edom you know obviously uh, dwelled in. And, and worship then, you know. Now, if you look at it, it says eagles, you know. If you type in Petra Eagle, it says broken pediment, eagles, freeze. A broken open pediment has its center cut out or offset to the rear, whereas two lateral segments remain in place. This design structure was very popular in Tolem and, uh, Ptolemaic architecture. That's going back to Ptolemy. <coughs> Uh, Ptolemy in Egypt. Now, who came first, you know? Esau or, or, or Ptolemy? You know? So this is popular in Ptolemaic arch architecture in Alexandria and has been adopted from there. Man, that's that's heavy. That's showing you the same architecture is being used. And this looks just like uh, Greek and Roman architecture when you look at it. And these two bits here, these are broken off eagles, you know, which they probably just destroyed uh, to, to hide themselves because they've been trying to hide themselves for a very long time. But you can still clearly tell that these are, if these are eagles, or they once were. It says eagles on the acrotaria at the corners of both pediment halves. There are eagles whose bodies and heads have been mutilated by iconoclasts. And we know who the, ma the major iconoclast uh, of the world is, you know, going back to the Renaissance era. In the Ptolemaic tradition, the eagles embodiment of Zeus, which, who is their main deity, which, which uh, Esau's god was Quos, you know, symbolized the divine power of the dynasty. And in this sense, they are probably to be interpre interpreted in Petra as well. The eagle is also the symbol of Dushara, the most important male tribal god of the Nabataean kings. Hey, how much more do you need, man? You know? And when you look at these images, that's two eagles there. I believe there's other ones. 
this is the right side. Uh, well, where is it? I may have to get a different uh, image of it. Like if I click on more, yeah, that that's the right side of the eagle, of the uh, of this uh, temple or whatever it is, and you have the other side, right? So that's two here, and there's two on the other side. That's four, and uh, I believe there's a fifth one right here. Now we all know that uh, the families of Esau Edom is, is famously known for having five dukes, you know. So is that a coincidence that these eagles? These, you know, you, you have five broken eagles on here representing who they are. And that eagle was subsequently adopted by the Greeks and the Romans. And now we know today America, you know, so there can't be much more proof than that. You know, Akim, so I try, I wanted to keep this a little bit short, but there was a lot to bring out here. You know, hopefully our brothers were edified, uh, stay in the faith, stay prayed up, keep studying, call her law. Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rakakwadash Wa Abad Babal.